Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is John Rose, and today I want to take a closer look at how conventional wisdom can turn even the most intelligent mind into a social idiot. Now, I just coined that word last week. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I got it from Lenin's useful idiot. Now, many of y'all may have already heard the term useful idiot before, especially if you watched my other videos because I make reference to these useful idiots quite often. A social idiot is basically the same thing, except not quite at that level. A useful idiot is the term Lenin used to describe those very naive and uninformed people who helped him with his agenda. They were well-meaning, they were intelligent, but they just didn't understand what was going on, and they were promoting evil things, ignorantly. Well, a social idiot is basically the same thing, except we're not quite that influential, well, influential as the useful idiots. We're not as useful, but we're still useful because we're still believing in false knowledge. We're still putting energy into false information. And I came up with this term for several reasons. Because I'm reminded quite often, based on some of the comments I get from people, how they're useful idiots, or a better term would be a social idiot. And I especially noticed that on my video I did on Aubrey Gray. I get a lot of intelligent people who come to that trying to defend what Aubrey Gray is doing. And obviously they didn't even watch my video. Uh, but you can tell they're what I call a social idiot. And what makes an intelligent person a social idiot? It's conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom is when a whole bunch of people believe in bullshit. And they do so because that bullshit has been contrived. It's been paid for. The powers that be have invested a lot of time and money to make sure we believed in bullshit. So the status quo can keep going on as the status quo. It's amazing how someone can be so smart and be totally oblivious to the obvious. Stop trying to fly in my ear. Where they have no idea how they're being conditioned to think and believe. It saddens me when I reflect back on my life to see how I was tricked and fooled into believing things, thinking that they were actually my thoughts and ideas when actually I hadn't put any thought and time into it at all. I was just bombarded with so many references thinking one way, I just immediately thought that way. Hence conventional wisdom. When everyone believes something is true and it's bullshit, it's because the powers that be want you to believe in bullshit. The powers that be mold society and it's very easy when you own and control every major sector of human endeavor, when you control the media, the entertainment industry, the educational systems. It's frightening when you realize how easily we've been controlled. And when you look around, you see people fall for it. They don't know any better. Again, the powers that be control society. They want us to think and act a certain way. They want us to believe in certain things. And when I see people say certain things nowadays, I realize they might as well be just saying, Polly want a cracker? Or across the Atlantic, Polly wants a cracker. Or, or based on an old Fraser show I, remind, I was reminded of when I thought of this the other day, came out in 1997. Watch it, it's a funny episode, season four, episode 14, to kill a talking bird. <laughs> Not to kill a mockingbird, to kill a talking bird. Clever writers in this show, they, they had this exotic bird that could mimic what people said, and it was really funny. The dad comes in and goes, oh, these stupid birds. They, uh, they're just taught a couple of lines when, they, when, they're in the, when they're in the shop and they, they can't say anything else. They're just cute and stupid. <laughs> and then the bird replies, cute and stupid. But anyway, it was a funny episode because this bird was able to pick up on a couple of things that <clears throat> Fraser's brother was saying. And he was giving a party and people would come in and go, Carol's a lush, Peter's a lynch. Uh, what was her name? Stephanie's horny. <laughs> And Fraser goes, no, no, I never said that. I was saying I'm horny. I, I was saying I only said you were cute. And then the bird goes, cute and stupid. <laughs> Polly want a cracker? 
you silly people. You repeat stuff you don't even realize what you're doing. You're just like a parrot regurgitating the bullshit that was put into you. It's maddening to understand what I understand now and I see people going around, Paul, they want a cracker all the time. Cute, but stupid. Intelligent minds, and yet social idiots. You have no idea how you've been programmed. No idea how you say things on a daily basis and you're just adding more references of bullshit in other people's books of bullshit. And I talk about this more in detail in Satan's Secret Weapon, one of my favorite videos where I explain that the powers that be know what they've done to us and they've done it on purpose. They've been programming our brains, they've been putting books in our brains to make us believe a certain way. So that all we do is we just go right back to those books. Polly want a cracker. Cute but stupid. Oh, I wish I could find some humor in this, but I can't. The average person has no idea what little they know. Most people think vaccines eradicated polio and smallpox and measles and all that, and nothing could be further from the truth. I did a really good video showing the graphs that prove that these diseases didn't go away because of vaccines. And yet, that's conventional wisdom. Most people believe that. Still, a huge percentage of people believe that when you get sick, you go to a doctor. You gotta trust your doctors, they're the experts. If you watch any of my other videos, you know that our so-called experts are not our experts in just about every field. The powers that be control our educational systems. Watch the Norman Dodd interview where he explains how they control the historians to lie about history. So history will repeat itself. And all the time I get people saying, well, that's just history. Don't need to worry about it. We do if we don't have knowledge of it, access to it. And why? Because it's going to repeat itself. The same things that happened last century are going to happen again this century unless we wake up to this conventional wisdom, these books of bullshit that have been put into our brain so that we'll have an emotional reaction before we have a chance to intellectualize it. I just did a video the other day about how people push our emotional buttons because when reason and emotion clash, emotion always wins. And the con artists, the psychopaths who rule the world know that. And they rely on the fact that they put these books of bullshit in our brain and they know how to push those buttons. They know how to get you to go around in Polly Wanna Cracker. Cute but stupid. What's it gonna take to help people realize they've got books of bullshit in their brain? It's very hard, isn't it? It's hard to get people to empty their cup. It's hard to sit down before a fact like a little child and give up every preconceived notion we have about virtually everything on this planet. And again, it's frightening when you think how easy it is to con the masses, how easy it is to mold their little bitty brains to make them think just about whatever they want. And the main goal is to bring down our family values, to break down the family unit, to get us to fight amongst ourselves, to get the, hate, the, the old and the young to fight, the men and the women to fight, the white and the blacks to fight the Christians and the Muslims to fight. That's what psychopaths do. Study defense against the psychopath. The MO of a psychopath is divide and conquer. These guys were created out of the chaos that we created. They swim in, in chaos. They instigate this chaos, and they could not exist if it wasn't for this chaos. So that's all we have to do to defeat this, this small group of people who own and control us. We got to get rid of our chaos. We got to get reconnected. We got to figure out why are we in this state of chaos where the mob can no longer rule us safely. I explained this in Satan's secret weapon, how governments go through cycles called the Kyklo cycles. I explained how democracy goes through st stages. There's nine stages of democracy and we're being played like a fiddle. We have no idea that we're being directed one direction. And I'm reminded of this all the time. I heard a woman the other day, I, 
I see y'all many times on, on my bike ride, and she made a comment. I thought, social idiot. Just talked to a guy this morning, and he said something immediately, social idiot. We're oblivious to the obvious. We're oblivious to the fact that our brains are being molded and have been ever since we're since we came out of the womb, basically. Before we had the ability of critical thinking, society already attacked us, made us believe in absurdity, so we'll keep committing these atrocities. It's hard to break away. Aristotle said, the mark of an intelligent mind is the ability to entertain a thought without accepting it. I'm beginning to think there aren't too many smart people out there. Because very few people out there seem to have that ability. And that's also by design. Our educational systems do not teach critical thinking skills for a reason. The purpose of our educational systems is to make sure that when we get out of those systems, we won't be able to think for ourselves from then on out. A lot of you guys don't even know that. A lot of you guys don't want to know it because it's frightening. It's cognitive dissonance. It's hard to entertain those thoughts. And why am I talking about all this? Because I'm on the hero's journey, and I've been on it for 29 years. And one of the things we have to be aware of on the hero's journey are the obstacles. Now, a lot of you guys are new to my channel. A lot of you guys are new to the hero's journey. And you might not be, at this, at this point, ready to entertain all these obstacles yet. But once you start sharing this message, which is the whole purpose of the hero's journey, you're going to have to be aware of those obstacles. Just like a good sales presentation, when you go in, trying to help someone realize they need something, you have to be aware of what their objections are going to be so that you've got a good answer to help them understand that this is something they need. We have to do the same thing, my friends, on the hero's journey, the raw vegan hero's journey. We're not supposed to cook our foods. We're not supposed to eat animals. We're not supposed to eat plants. We're not biologically adapted to eat. We're not supposed to process them where there's nothing left in them that's any good. We're not supposed to be using chemicals in any way. And all five of those mistakes are going to make us sick. And that's what the powers that be want. That's why nutritionists don't know anything about nutrition. That's why doctors don't know anything about health. It's why historians don't know anything about history. <clears throat> and it's why the vast majority of us, even amongst the most intelligent minds, are social idiots. We're being played like a fiddle. We're doing exactly what the powers that be want us to do. Remember that quote I use quite often by Bertrand Russell, who was part of the Fabian Society, established in 1884 to usher in a one world collective estate, wrote that great book in 1953, The Impact of Science on Society. He wrote, diet, injections, injunctions. That's how it starts off. And that's what we're going to be, that's what we're going to use against the masses to make sure that they'll become brain dead. He didn't use those words, and I paraphrase that quite a bit. But that, in essence, is what happens to people who have been bombarded with so much bullshit about certain topics, they have literally become brain dead. Because they don't have the intellect to entertain the idea that there may be another version. Study the Fabian Society, folks. George Orwell. 1984, Brave New World, Aldous Huxley. These guys are thought of as to be prophetic because they wrote these books ahead of their time. But they weren't prophetic. They were both part of the Fabian Society. They knew what, what was planned ahead for society. George Orwell tried to warn us, and they murdered him to set an example the, the next year. Aldous Huxley, he, they were just rubbing our noses in it in it, just like they like to do in other places. It's done all the time in government white papers where the, the powers that be come right out and say what they're doing. And yet the vast majority of us don't know what's going on. And it boggles my mind that more and more people are waking up to the fact that we have a foreign corporation that's printing our money, charging us for that money plus the interest, making us debt slaves, creating an illusion of scarcity so that they can continue to, to control us. Remember, my channel is all about two main topics. The ultimate tool of control is our health. 
And the absolute tool of control is the money. And I realize not all of you are ready for both of those messages. Remember, health is upstream. We got to get reconnected. We got to stop destroying those biophotons so we'll fill one with everything. But in the meantime, we've got to do some downstream work. We've got to take back control over someone else printing our money and get back to a debt-free currency instead of a debt-based a debt currency. So what I'd like to do at this point, boy, that dog is panting so loud I can hear from way over here, is to make sure you guys watch several of my videos that will help, we, help you wake up. Watch Satan's Secret Weapon. Watch the Norman Dodd interview. Those are two really powerful interviews that will ha are two powerful videos rather that will help you understand that our experts are not our experts. Now the other video I'd like you guys to watch is what is the healthiest diet in the world? This is a very long video but I explain a lot of pieces to the puzzle in this one video and I hope of all the videos I've done this would be one of them that would go viral because I talk about so many important topics. I talk about how stress enters the picture. I talk about how we have 10 body systems. I talk about the cause of disease, and this goes back to the whole beginning of this video, one of the reasons why I started it, were all, were all these ignorant comments from intelligent people with conventional wisdom slamming me for pointing out Aubrey Gray was a fraud. This guy is not an expert in aging because he doesn't know the cause of disease. I explain what the cause of disease is in my video on what's the healthiest diet in the world. I also explain that in Healing Secrets Revealed. And medicine is the ultimate tool of control. It's not complicated. I'm not even going to talk about it now. Go to those videos and watch it. And realize that if you don't know the cause of disease, you're not an anti-aging specialist. You're going to be looking for cures for diseases that shouldn't even exist. And my God, they got a new program coming out again to brainwash the masses to create more social idiots. I can't quite remember what the name of it was, but it's something about the cure, the race for the cure, or something with the cure in it. Did a video a while back when they came out with the virus hunters, another way to make us think we got these intelligent minds trying to find the, the, a cure for a disease. There are no cures for the vast majority of our problems because they don't exist. There is no cure for a lifestyle-related problem because a cure implies I take something else and add it to what I'm already doing. The cure is to stop doing what we're doing. And that's hard to do. That's why I have a two-hour seminar on how to take a solid food vacation. Because then when you take a solid food vacation, you're going to finally be in a position to evaluate what you need to do. And most of us can't do that right now. Because we're not going to think it's a fair trade. So we have to detoxify ourselves by taking a solid food vacation. We've got to de-indoctrinate ourselves. We've got to empty all of our cups we got to realize we've got a lot of conventional wisdom. Once you start looking at how many beliefs you have that are bullshit, and you make a list of it, you'll be amazed. I remember I did this 20 years ago and I had over 50, a list of 50 beliefs that I knew were wrong, that I, brought up, I was brought up thinking were true. That was part of conventional wisdom. Remember, conventional wisdom can make even the most intelligent mind a social idiot. And you don't want to be a social idiot, do you? I know what happens when you, you stop being one. Anybody have an idea? <laughs> You're in for a treat. Ow!